manufacturing, technology, hot topics, and a little bit of tomfoolery. This is the MTD Podcast. Hello and welcome to a very special MTD Podcast. I'm actually joined by Mike Falcon and Greg Fallon of Autodesk. Gents, welcome. Thanks for this invite to this wonderful facility in Birmingham. Quickly, can we just talk us a little bit about yourself and what you do here at Autodesk. Mike, if we start yeah, with you. Absolutely, yeah. Mike Malkin, I look after the, uh, the global digital manufacturing sales and technical team. I uh, engage with all our customers around the world, talking to them and, uh, about our make solutions and how we can help them. And Greg? Yeah, so I'm Greg Fallon. I lead our uh, strategy and marketing for our manufacturing industry team. Okay, and commitment to manufacturing, what, what does that mean? Boy, uh, so I'll start with that. So commitment to manufacturing, um, I think means whether or not Autodesk is committed to manufacturing, uh, which I think is kind of a silly question. Uh, we are uh, hugely committed to manufacturing as a company. Manufacturing makes up about uh, between 30 and 40% of our business today uh, is dealing with global manufacturers. We're really excited about some of the things that we're doing right now. Uh, getting into advanced manufacturing and, uh, and some of the things we're doing to try to reimagine how manufacturers adapt uh, to new trends uh, that are appearing with regards to new uh, means of production uh, and automation. It's changing, isn't it? So, so what are Waterdesk yeah. doing to change with it? Uh, absolutely. Well, so we're actually, we think uh, that we're ahead of the market trying to help drive a lot of that change. So we've been making significant investments over the past 10 years uh, looking out as we think about where manufacturing will be 10 years from now or 20 years from now, uh, looking at how technologies like the cloud uh, will impact how manufacturers work, uh, thinking about how tr global economic trends and geopolitical trends are affecting manufacturers, things like nearshoring, uh, an aging workforce, um, dealing with uh, a population that's changing, um, thinking about how, uh, where you make your products uh, is almost as important as the products themselves. And so uh, we're trying to combine these technology and market trends uh, to come up with compelling offerings to help manufacturers navigate a pretty complex environment. And Mike, you've got a new channel, the Make channel. Can you tell us more? We have. It really is an intentional investment around getting more people into the ecosystem that can help our customers understand what are the opportunities, how can we engage and help them win more business and compete as the market changes. So, you know, as this opportunity grows and we're investing in more products and, and more capabilities, we have to get that to our customers. And it's a local, it's a local thing because it's not just about the software, it's about the services. So it's how do we actually get the products into the hands of the customers, provide them with a great experience, give them the services to adopt and get value from the technology. So it really is, it's about investing in delivering that value to the customers so they can, they can get return on their investment. Can you give us an example of that? Is it more people? Is it boots on it, ground? Is it's it... more feet on the street, yeah. I mean, you know, is we, we've always had a channel, but we were never really intentional about the channel. We wanted to make sure that these, these partners had the necessary skills and the people and the backup from Autodesk. So that's what we've done. We've created a framework and we've, we've built some tools around that and capabilities that will make sure that those partners can be trusted advisors to their customers, and then we stand alongside with them and, and help them and deliver that to the customers. So, you know, we're gonna see this business grow. We're making this big investment in the technology in places like here, Birmingham, the, the technology center. It's a huge investment, and we want, we want to share that with our customers and our partners and make sure they get the value. And Greg, have you got anything to add on the new channel? I uh, know, but it's one that I'm really excited about. I think, um, you know, having a new channel gives us an ability to uh, reach uh, new parts of the world where we haven't traditionally been active in. Uh, it allows us to bring our technology to manufacturers uh, in places where um, they might not have access to the technology otherwise. Um, the other thing I get excited about is the ability to provide value-added services beyond the software to our customers. I think um, while we've been, I think, very good at providing those services, I think providing uh, a set of channel partners who can uh, extend the number and type of services is very important to our customers. Mm -hmm. And that's across the globe, yeah? It is, uh, yeah. I mean, we were, always, we, we, had, we were very much indirect in sort of APAC, but we, we were more of a direct business in, in EMEA and in, in America. So really, that's the area that we're, we're adding more partners. We've added 40 partners to that ecosystem, which adds about 150 people 
additional people across the globe who are focused on this technology. So, yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll, I mean we're starting. So it will, it will continue to grow and we will continue to see those partners grow. And you need to know the partners, not representatives of Autodesk, fully trained, you, you know, the, the coal face, able to give advice, training. Well, you know, again, it is, it's, this is a very specialist business. You've got to know what you're talking about to be successful, you know. So this is really, we're looking, we're keeping the bar high. We're looking for invested partners who, who take the right people in, who can go and understand the industry and the customers. And, yeah, so, yeah, we're, we're making sure that we, we have invested companies and we can help them be successful as a channel partner and they can make their customers successful. But they've got to have the domain, the domain experience around solving the customer problems and delivering the services to do that. Sure. And Fusion 360, I understand that there's a big announcement this week. Can, can we have a sneak peek ahead of AU? Are we, are we allowed? <laughs> well, uh, so I think by the time this podcast hits the street, uh, <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll, be, we'll be out there. So, uh, so tomorrow, um, actually Wednesday, at Autodesk University, we'll be talking about new advanced manufacturing capabilities that will be available in Fusion uh, in the coming months uh, with the ability of Fusion customers to access what we're calling extensions, which gives uh, customers the ability to choose when and where uh, they adopt these uh, technologies. So it's in a completely new business model. It's, a, it's what we'd call a consumption business model where users can pretty much pay as they go, choose what they want to have, uh, and then deploy it within their companies. Um, so we're, we're starting off by offering additive uh, and some advanced subtractive cap capabilities within Fusion. That's a great idea. So it's almost like a servitization model where you, you pay as you go, essentially. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty much. And it gives a lower cost of entry to some of these high-end capabilities. And yeah, so we, we think that's going to serve more customers and make this technology available to, to more customers around the world. Yeah, it's a great idea. And that takes me on to the subscription model. You're the innovators of that model, certainly in manufacturing environment. How do you feel that's gone? So um, I think it's gone really well. Um, it's, it's gone really well, you know, certainly for us as a company and for the majority of our customers. Um, you know, I think there's a lot of, it's a change for the industry. It's a, it's yeah. a, it's a big uh, change to some customers uh, who are used to buying their software. And, uh, and there is an adoption curve for customers to change the way that they're thinking, but we've seen overwhelming evidence that once customers move to the subscription model, uh, they by and large are extremely happy. Um, it gives them a lot more flexibility as their business, uh, to their businesses or as their businesses grow. Um, they can dial up or dial down the capabilities at will. And that, and that is happening, yes. People are going from the maintenance model over to subscription. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, people are doing it in other aspects of their lives as well. So, you know, some, some people it's a culture shock. In some areas, it's going faster than others. But in general, customers understand the value. It's a lower cost to entry. They get more value from it. And, you know, and yeah, we, we, we started slightly later with the manufacturing products and some of the rest of Autodesk. But we, you know, we're well above our, our, our targets for, for getting customers onto this model. Good. We all do it, don't we, at home? You yeah. know, you probably drive a car, you possibly don't own, you know, Sky, Netflix, Amazon, all the others. It's all subscription-based. It's the way yeah. the whole world's going. Exactly. exactly. You know, I, I watch TV at home. I've got Netflix, I've got Sky. I don't choose to watch any of them. My wife does, unfortunately. But, you know, if I, if I, if I needed to buy all those films, for instance, it, it, it you know, exactly. cost thousands, wouldn't it? And in this model, manufacturing, we are late as manufacturers and engineers. We can be late to technology, but I, I think it's a, a no-brainer. There's a... A, a, a friend of MTD, Swapshire Precision, he always said he wouldn't go across to the subscription model. You know, you, you, know, you know what's coming next. He always said, no, I bought that, I've got my maintenance, I'm happy. But now he's a very happy subscriber. So, Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, it's up to us to articulate the value and keep delivering value to those customers because once they're in a subscription model, they have the choice if they're going to stick around. So we have to make sure that we're delivering that value to them so they continue to want to subscribe. To subscribe. Exactly. Arguably, the client, the end user, has got the leverage, haven't they? Yes, if they're not absolutely. happy, if they're not happy, they yeah. go elsewhere. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, I know the subscription model changes the relationship with our customers. And I think it takes a while for our customers to realize that we're putting them in charge and uh, it's forcing us as a company, yeah. uh, we're electing uh, to take this on and be completely devoted and committed to our customers. So for those who haven't done it, why, why should they? Well, again, if you know, there's, you know, their businesses are changing and they, they need to be, it offers them an agile framework in order to look at how their businesses are changing, how they can, can compete, what technologies do they need to get access to, and that will change a long time. So the subscription model allows them to do that. 
Mm -hmm. um, so if you're looking to innovate, this is a great platform to do it. If you want to get into additive and subtractive and generative and simulation, you can do that much more quickly and easily through a subscription model than buying capital chunks of software up front. Much more easy. Yeah, to me, as I say, you wouldn't need to convince me if I was buying if I was buying CAM or CAD or some sort of manufacturing software. But what I like, like about Autodesk, we're here at Birmingham, but I know the site is replicated around the globe, but you, you can prove out customer parts, you can, no doubt you do your training here. It, it's all here, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, this is a great facility. We got, you know, every time I come here, I only live about an hour away on the train. Every time I come here, there's lots of customers here. Seeing this for the first time, realizing how serious Autodesk are about manufacturing, and, it, and it's a game changer. And just as impressive as the facility and all the, and the machines as all the people that are here. There's some smart people here who know a lot about manufacturing, so that's great to rub shoulders with our customers. Yeah, exactly that. You know, like you say, you, you, know, you learn every time you come here. I, I certainly do. I've been a manufacturer all my life. And every time you come here, there's something new. There's a new component you haven't seen before, yeah. a new process you've never seen before. But huge investment. Can we expect any more from Autodesk? Not just here in Birmingham, but maybe around the globe. So uh, we have uh, two other technology centers. We have one in San Francisco and one in Boston. Um, we continue to expand these centers. Uh, you'll see expansion into new man manufacturing techniques and methods as they come up. Um, I don't know that we have any plans to you know, increase the number of centers, but with the centers we have, we want to be best in class. These give us unique insight into what our customers do on a day-to-day -day basis, and it helps us try to stay ahead of the trends that are happening in the marketplace. So guys, recently, Power Mill 2020 has been released. Sorry to put you on the spot, but we do hear lots of things you know, about Autodesk. Are you still investing in your products? Yeah, absolutely. You know, developing them? Absolutely, and you know, I, I, yeah, we hear the same thing. You know, and I think the, our competition would love for that to be true, but unfortunately it isn't. And, and Power Mill 2020 is a, a primary example. You know, we, we spent, we spent the, the last couple of years developing things that make the product quicker. Everybody wants the speed to be up. That's important. The speed of the tool paths is really important. So there's a lot of effort. There's a lot of development gone into that product. It's the fastest release of Power Mill we've ever had. And that's because we have a huge development team working on that, working on all our products. So our development investment's gone up. And, and that's reflected in all the products that you see where we're developing not just the hero products like Power Mill, but our Fusion brands as well. And they're all benefiting from that investment. So, so, so you, take, you take Power Mill. Have you lost any developers on that program? No, no. All those developers are now part of a huge team. So we, we continue to invest and that continues to grow. And, it, and it's the best release of Power Mill we've ever had. Yeah, and Joe, I just want to point out that um, the way that we look at providing value to our customers is holistically. So first of all, uh, Mike's right, we have the best release of Power Mill ever coming out right now, and it's fantastic, and we will continue to innovate and drive new technology there. But at the same time, every Power Mill customer gets an entitlement to Fusion 360, uh, which bring, is bringing brand new technology to the market as well, helping them solve problems in their shops that they may have to pay for other tools to solve today, uh, and they may not even be problems that they're equipped to solve at all. So that's an example of where we're bringing together other technologies to add value to our customers. And we're going to continue to do that over and over and over. And like I mentioned on Wednesday, we'll be making a big announcement which will make it very cost effective for customers who have Fusion 360 through a power mill entitlement or through some other entitlement uh, to get access to other technology like additive technology that they may not have access to in a really cost effective way. So at the end of the day, uh, yes, we're innovating. I think we're innovating faster than anybody else in the marketplace, both from a business model perspective and from a technology perspective. And, and I'd just like to add to that, the, that's why these partners are investing. We've got existing partners, existing um, Autodesk partners who are on the design side who are looking to, to add the capabilities to their portfolio. We've got our, some of our existing resellers and we've even got new people investing and starting their businesses. We've got one in the UK called Premier Ship Solutions who've decided to invest in, in this opportunity. And all the partners I talk about, talk to about this are really excited about how this can help them grow their business. So, you know, our investment and their investment is really gonna help us make a difference in the marketplace. Yeah. The other thing I'll add is just, um, I mean, the best litmus test for how we're doing in the marketplace is customer adoption. So our manufacturing portfolio grew at over 30% last year. It's one of the most exciting aspects of our business. We're seeing uh, gigantic customer adoption at some of the largest corporations around the world, uh, as well as small job shops. And, uh, and at 
account after account after account, we're seeing competitive displacements, customers electing Autodesk portfolio because of both the breadth of what we have to offer and in many cases, specific point technology that might be available in tools like PowerMill. Mm -hmm. So on, on the commercial element, if, if there's someone not using any of your software, maybe not using CAM or CAD of any description, programming on the machine is, is a good example. Are there any incentives? You know, how can you get them over the line? How can you lower that, that bar barrier to entry? Well, the subscription model does that because it is a lower barrier, barrier to entry than, than the, the previous model. So, you know, and we, and we have trials and they can go on and trial download, try the software out. You know, look at things like Fusion 360. That's a great tool to, to look at with the capabilities that we've got as a complete platform. And then, you know, that expands out into all the other software solutions that we've got. But yeah, I mean, talk to one of our partners, talk to one of our, you know, our salespeople, and they can figure out what it is you're trying to do and see how they can help you. Yeah, and it doesn't matter if you're a one-man band or you're, a, no. you know, an air engine manufacturer. We, we, we serve all parts of the marketplace from some of the biggest manufacturers. We have a named account program. We looked after our biggest customers like GM and Ford and right down to hobbyists who use Fusion 360. So we have the full spectrum of people using our software. Okay, so it's AU this week. Is there anything else you can tell me? Uh, AU London. Well, first of all, it's going to be a super exciting event. Um, I think we've got uh, some interesting announcements happening on Wednesday um, and tomorrow. So I, I hope people attend at least uh, virtually. Yeah, it's one of my favorite events. I go every year, especially the London one. We spotted it, started it a couple of years ago, and it's grown and grown. So there'll be a couple of thousand people there, customers, and it's always great to spend time with them. Brilliant. Well, thanks for your time, guys. I know you've got a train to catch to get down to London. So thanks for your time. Appreciate your time, and have a safe journey down there. Yeah, thank you, Joe. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Take care. Cheers.